let's talk about a bunch of uh, stocks. And this one is actually from the primary markets, Concord Biotech. The company has launched their 1475 crore rupee IPO today. The subscription will be open for the public till the 8th of August. We are joined by the Joint Managing Director and CEO Ankur Ved, as well as the CFO of the company, Lalit Sethi, to talk about this in detail. Thanks a lot, uh, gentlemen, for joining in. This, of course, is a company which was backed by uh, the late Rakesh Junjunwala. The family also still continues to hold about a quarter of the company's stake itself. Uh, Ankur, Lalit, um, good luck to you in the listed space. Um, first you. up, you know, let's uh, talk about your business on the whole. The, you, you specialize in fermentations. How is this That's different from all the other API players? And how does that give you an edge? Does this mean higher margins than the others? So, uh, a very good morning to all. So, yes, uh, you know, Concord is operating in the fermentation space. Um, and, you know, fermentation is quite different from the chemical synthesis. And uh, mm -hmm. because here you are working with living microorganisms. Um, and then, you know, you have to ensure that you manufacture the desired product with the desired productivity. So, a lot of technical expertise is required here. Uh, you know, things like strain improvement, media optimization, and developing a very robust downstream recovery process. Um, and given this kind of expertise, uh, not many have globally. And that's why you see very, very handful of companies uh, in this segment globally. Okay. All right. So it seems like a fast specialized business. Uh, well, good morning, gentlemen, and thanks so much uh, for joining in. Well, uh, you know, just to get a few numbers, we don't want a guidance, but we want to understand what is the peak revenue potential that you can do since it's an OFS, no money will be coming back to the company. But uh, can uh, you tell us, uh, you know, the revenue is around 850 crores of the last recorded number. With the current gross block, what's the peak potential? Uh, basically, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, industry, it's a uh, the asset turn is around 2.5 to 3 CR. So we have a gross block of around 800 CR with which we can make uh, approximately 2.4 uh, billion uh, INR. So 2,400 crore could be, uh, uh, you know, the revenue which we can make at the optimum utilization of the capacities. Wow. And by when can you reach there? Because, I mean, 2,500 crores seems like a far cry from where you are right now. Last year, revenue was close to around 850-odd crores. Uh, what is, uh, you know, uh, the steady state growth that one can expect to um, go to that number that you're talking about? Uh, last year, we had basically uh, uh, commissioned one of the facility in Mbasi with the, the capacity of 800 meter cube of the uh, meter cube of the fermentation. Uh, against the 450 meter cube of uh, the capacity which was there for the unit funds, therefore, uh, you know, we feel that uh, taking up the ramping up the uh, ramping up of the capacity will can result into this such kind of revenues. Okay, got it. Uh, so there's a good runway in case demand and the outlook improves. Then you don't have to put any more money on the table. You can more than double your revenue. So that's good news. Tell us some more about your revenue mix. You know, I'm looking at it. 50% is India, 50% is exports. How do you see your revenue mix changing? And also tell us, you know, API is close to around 90% of your sales. Formulations, I think, is close to 11%. So how does this mix change? And what's, is there a margin differential between these segments? Yes, so, uh, you know, we expect the formula. So as Lalit mentioned, that we have growth levers in place for both the API as well as the, mm. as well as the formulation. So... At the API, the newer facility that we have put up, uh, and at the formulation level, uh, we have the new injectable plant coming up, as well as more consolidation happening at the oral solid dosage facility. So while the base will continue to increase, um, you know, the, the split between the formulation and API would be around 80% to API and 20% formulation. All right, and uh, geographic breakup? Geographically, basically 50% is uh, we are getting from the domestic market. 17% uh, is there from the US market and remaining 33% is from the rest of the world. Right. You're, um, uh, you know, looking to take formulations into the US itself. So does that mean that your US uh, exposure increases? Do you have all the approvals in place for the same? And does that come at a higher margin for you given your backward integrated? So, uh, uh, you know, we are in formulations, we are present in global markets, uh, US mm -hmm. emerging markets and in India, uh, but we are more primarily focused on the emerging markets and uh, the India market than so in the US. Uh, in US, our presence uh, is relatively small. Uh, however, we plan to take uh, such high quality products that we have in the US as well to the, uh, to the global markets. 
and in the US we are working with our uh, with our marketing partner there okay all right uh, you know for the industry on the whole uh, this china plus one uh, you know strategy has been a big uh, boon could you tell us how has it uh, you know are you all experiencing the same because as you all said you all require a little more technical expertise in the api that you all are making so have you is that a tailwind for you all as well as i want to get get a broad margin guidance because the last few years has been all over the place so a broad band i don't want an exact number but a broad band that we should be looking at so so you know um, cdmo business is where we see the pli uh, the china plus one strategy playing out because hmm. uh, you know many of the cdmo players went to china in in terms of larger capacities uh, but now from a de-risking perspective and a china plus one strategy they're looking in terms of where they can uh, you know partner uh, uh, partner with which potential uh, partners they can work with and uh, definitely india is a preferred choice and within india concord being an expert in the fermentation space becomes a partner of choice in such kind of molecules so we are seeing more and more increase uh, uh, you know uh, uh, interest coming in the cdmo place but again such kind of cdmo opportunities do take time and that's why we consider it more from a medium to a long term perspective strategy for us right and uh, what about the margins i mean as uh, nigel was just uh, asking you because I remember a couple of years ago the margins were well above fifty eight percent. Then they dropped perhaps because of the decline in API prices to thirty eight percent. Last year was close to around forty percent. Just wanted to understand what is the rough band that one should be looking at and injectables as well. I mean, you're looking to diversify into that. Uh, how much big can that opportunity be? So margins and injectables. Okay. Uh, as far as the margins are concerned, historically we had been in the range of around forty to forty two percent. Uh, in financial year 2021, there was a margin of 53 percent because there was rationalisation of expenses because of uh, there was so much of restriction because of the lockdown and uh, COVID period. That's why we were not, uh, you know, uh, we were not spending that much of uh, amount on this on travelling and so and so kind of overheads. So that was one of the reason uh, why it was 53 percent in financial year 2023. In financial year, uh, sorry, financial year 2021. In financial year 2022, the margins uh, were 38 percent because, as I mentioned, that the Limbasa facility was commissioned in that particular year. The whole the whole expenses were factored in that financial year, whereas the capacity was uh, utilized for validation batches, separating batches, and various R&D activities. And going forward, it is going to be used for the commercial purposes. Once the it starts using for the commercial purposes, it is going to be uh, you know the margins are going will get improved. And the injectables. Are you talking uh, about? Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Uncle. Yeah. So maybe uh, talking about the injectable business. Uh, you know, this is again going to be more of a of an integration approach for us, like that we have done in the in the oral solid. So um, you know, we have quite a niche sec, uh, uh, niche range of fermentation APIs in the anti-infectives and the antifungal space, uh, wherein you know globally you don't see many players in this space. And we want, we are we are working towards how we can forward integrate into the injectables and cater to the global markets. Our our target markets initially are going to be mostly the emerging markets and the domestic markets, while the facility has been designed as per global regulatory standards. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining in and giving us a primer into what your business looks like, what the outlook is. Uh, we'll speak in greater detail. Once you guys are listed and then perhaps you can give us some more numbers as well as uh, we can address some of the more concerns and opportunities as well. Uh, for now, all the best for your IPO, Ankur and Lalit. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure talking to you.